Good morning. Let's talk about the newest money laundering operation at Disney. Has anyone figured it out yet? They spent $220 million on an eight-episode TV show. That's, well, if they're 30 minutes. Um, yeah, they would be 30 minutes. They wouldn't have commercials in them. Otherwise, a half-hour TV show is only 22 minutes in the United States. In Britain, it could go up to 26 minutes because their commercials are... Uh, yeah, I, I know all that. Um, well, right off the bat, I'm not an English major, although... Um, yeah, the lightsaber with the blood coming out. That is the new symbol of the feminist movement. Now, we're, yeah, we're going to talk about the feminist movement because um, people apparently have not figured it out. <laughs> the force is female. Uh, um, I'll fill in the pieces of the puzzle for you here. First of all, that blood is meant to symbolize something else. So when you figure it out, ladies, I know it's a little early in the morning. Try not to get too disgusted, right? That I didn't believe it at first either. And then I kind of other people over. I've watched plenty of videos on this. Um. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to. Now, in an age of light, a darkness rises. Should it not be a darkness arises? Actually, darkness should fall. I don't well the I don't think the English the English <laughs> sounds right here. But I'm gonna tell you something right off the bat. If you are a Christian, specifically Catholic, you should be offended by the word acolyte. The name of the show should be the neophyte, N-E-O-P-H-Y-T-E. -E. Why is that? Well, first of all, an acolyte is pertaining specifically to an understudy in a Catholic church. Being ordained to carry the wine and water and light the candles at the mass, an understudy. That's an acolyte. A neophyte is what Freemason are called when they first get initiated into the order. A recent convert to a belief, a proselyte. Now, they changed the definition here on Wicked, well, whatever Google uses for a reason, because they deny that this word exists. Because they say they're not a religion, that they're a fraternity. And neophyte is specifically an initiate into black magic. Now, I have not watched the act light yet, but I know what the first four episodes are about because they were leaked for preview screeners to watch, and I got my information from Film Threat, Chris Gore, and um, I forget the other guy's name. They, uh, so they've seen the first four episodes. It is in the third episode where the definition of the force comes out, and as per their definition of the force, because... The acolyte involves witches. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> there are no white men in the show. <laughs> Space lesbians. Now here is the most interesting thing of all this. Because I don't know if anyone has told Kathleen Kennedy or um, the producer Hedlund. Leslie Hedlund. Yeah, it's not a name I remember too easily because, um, yeah, why would I? That in the elite, women are actually despised heavily. So I don't know who they think they're trying to appease in Babylon, but um, the only reason this is only going on is to feminize military age fighting men in the United States for China, just like who is behind all the democratic gun control it's for china you wonder why california is disarmed well that would be the place that china would make a beachhead if they were to attack from the pacific right <laughs> so gee, not hard to figure out there so th this whole idea that they eh. but if you haven't figured it out now what's the difference between george lucas star wars and disney star wars well First of all, George Lucas got it. He got it in the uh, originals, sp specifically um, 
let's be honest, I, I don't think uh, Princess Leia is even wearing a bra in um, A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back because I was trying to figure out something. <laughs> so I rewatched the, the sequel trilogies. I don't like calling them that. They're the first three Star Wars. I don't care. I don't give a shit what they recalled them. But if the theory is correct, all I'm going to say is the Transformers were better looking back then. But George Lucas got it because this is supposed to be the acolyte is supposed to be Star Wars for lesbians, right? Uh, I would think that lesbian women are attracted to other women. If you cannot figure out See, we have all these uh, Star Wars experts on YouTube. My whole YouTube is, feed is full of it. Now, I think some people know, but they're afraid to say it because they're afraid of cancel culture. I've been there, done that. This is my 10th YouTube channel. I've already been threatened by Google, and I had to screenshot to shut my mouth about DEI and what the real purpose of that is because I nailed it right on the head. Headland. Yeah, and if you can't figure out what Kathleen Kennedy, Leslie Headland, D Daisy, <laughs> Daisy Ridley, uh, let's just say that a lot of teenage boys are not pulling up pics of them to fap off. Who are they pulling up pics? Now, yeah, because sex is the underlying root of this whole agenda that you have here, just not in the same way. Um. On the dark side. <laughs> okay. Natalie Portman. The Phantom Menace, 1999. Now, I barely remember this movie when it came out, but George Lucas did one thing in both his series. And then we have the yeah, infamous Princess Leia. How can we not remember her? Do you see the uh, reoccurring theme here with George Lucas' Star Wars? Well, it said Quentin Tarantino likes feet, and George Lucas apparently likes midriff section, which is pretty damn sexy, and he knew what people wanted. <laughs> <laughs> we could have, I'm not going to debate Natalie Portman and Carrie Fisher. All I'm saying is if it's correct, they were better looking back then. In fact, it seems as time goes on. Hey, whatever. But now we got... <laughs> yeah, and it is a big deal. And then we have the idea that this, Kathleen Kennedy, the force is female. Let, let me show you something here. If you can't figure out the occult neophytes. This one is questionable. That's a girl. That's a girl. Does anyone know why Kathleen Kennedy is wearing the black shirt as above, so below? Yeah, I mean, if you can't tell, this was George Lucas's and Steven Spielberg's little freak plaything. They know exactly what she is. Think she just got coffee for them? It's amazing how all you Hollywood experts out there cannot. Just figure it out. You don't get it. And until you don't get it, you have no... And yes, at the highest levels of the elite, women are absolutely despised. This is why they made Anana, uh, Lucifer, Ishtar in the Sumerian pantheon. I teach you about reptilians. They are androgynous. They absolutely despise the love between a man and a woman. However, this agenda has nothing to do with that. Because when it was about the agenda of sex cells... Yeah, the 80s and 70s were highly sexualized movies, which people enjoyed. I guess I enjoyed the dark side. Yeah, so we got that in the, uh, we had Natalie Portman in the prequel trilogy, showing off her midriff. The infamous Princess Leia. I was trying to figure out some boob physics in the um, remaster 4K version, because she's not wearing a bra, I think, in Empire. And there's one way to figure out if the theory is correct, and it has to do with jiggle physics. <laughs> so, you cannot recreate what God has already created. 
That's all I'm saying. Quite honestly, Carrie Fisher and Natalie Portman are kind of lacking in the, in the hip department, but hey, you know, whatever. Daisy Ridley ain't showing her midriff often. I don't want to see Leslie Headlands or uh, Captain Kennedy's midriff. <laughs> You're not putting any memorable... Now, I even watched the analysis of a... Um, I'll be nice here. Of uh, the acolyte from a... I think his name is Mr. Shatai. But he used to be a producer in Hollywood. And just watching the show... Uh, just going by... As they would say, the... Um, the first episode... And he's like, if I watched that in 1991 and I was a TV producer, this is what I would, if I would green light or not green light this show. And he went off the bias of being a producer. Producers don't give a shit whether they like the content or not because it boils down to money and ratings. Will this show get ratings? Will it be around in five years? Um, are these memorable characters? And Importantly, with Star Wars, because it was the whole foundation of what made George Lucas rich, it was the toys. Are they selling any fucking toys for the Acolyte? Darth Maul, 1999, was like one of the most... Yeah, there was a huge hype in 1995 for A Phantom Menace. People were buying toys that Darth Maul became like the biggest... I, I remember that because I've been to raves back then. After Star Wars came out, <laughs> I might have seen some Darth Mauls at raves. <laughs> I definitely saw some Jedi chicks dancing with lightsabers at a rave. That was pretty hot. <laughs> I think they were showing their midriffs off. <laughs> they got it. Uh, so this, look, this whole thing is a mess. Pun intended. So anyway, according to that guy, Mr. Shatai, he said, I would not green light this as a show. The first episode sucks for establishing it as a TV show. You're supposed to know in the first opening acts of a TV show where the quote unquote, he said home base because I, apparently it starts out on different planets into an action scene. You don't know who the main protagonist, what planet she operates from. In a science fiction show that needs to be established, sort of, or if not their home planet, the spaceship they primarily use, at least. Uh, there was no setting up of the characters. It involves a set of twins who have not seen each other in years. One is uh, evil, one is good. But strangely, they both have the, the same exact hairstyles. And it's the typical black girl hairstyles in every video game and movies now. Give her dreadlocks. Yeah, put a black chick in it. Give her dreadlocks and make her gay and lame. That's the South Park. Um, but anyway, he said he wouldn't uh, green light this as a TV show because it um, it made no none of the setup like structure of a TV show. Uh, Leslie Headland does not know what the fuck she is doing when it comes to writing TV shows. Sometimes TV shows are harder to put together than movies because, like you, like I said, uh, some TV shows can run up to five years. That's a lot of content you got to write and a lot of, you know, setting things up and and of course, yeah, it's Pride Month. Um, whatever. So the show's doing bad. And at the end of the day, they spent $220 million. Yeah, what the hell is going on? And I hear from the production value of the show. People are like, what the hell did they spend it on? This looks like cosplay. George Lucas needs to take Star Wars over. At least we would get women with showing off their midriffs. You know, I can get down. I can get jiggy with George Lucas Star Wars because at least... It's going to be a, um, he's like, put a chick in it and show off her midriff section. Uh, and Disney Star Wars is like, put a chick in it and make her gay. Like, but they're not chicks. 
That's what you're not getting. The force is not female. The force is transformers. And they don't appeal to anyone. Man or woman. And they make up such a low percentage of the population. Who are you trying to sell a $200 million show to with black lesbians? That's not a huge audience for sci-fi. Just saying. You could stop with the fucking gaslighting and excuses. Uh, I think the next thing that, you know, in all seriousness, people need to start looking into Disney and Amazon and people like that for money laundering. Kind of funny, they want to break Trump's balls over um, an administrative uh, error on paperwork. Yet, this shit is allowed to continue. Get some balls, Governor DeSantis. Oh, well. Were they based out of Burbank? Is it, where's the jurisdiction for Disney? Is it Florida or California? I don't know. Someone needs to look into them for money laundering. And there's probably a lot of lawsuits that are coming to Disney from investors, the board, who are losing funds. Yeah. Anyway, it's my um, analysis of the Acolyte. It shouldn't be called the Acolyte. It should be called the Neophyte because that's more of a reference to a black magic occult order, especially if this involves witches. The rewriting with the forces. The force was chi. It was positive prana in the original Star Wars. It's called the middle path in Buddhism. It is the force that Shaolin monks used. Then you have the left hand path. Which is black magic. Which is the false light of Lucifer. You got this shit all backwards. Or whatever. Um. She obviously doesn't know shit about the occult. People like Leslie Hedlund and Kathleen Kennedy are probably so fucked up in the head too because they find out that they can't practice trans magic for immortality. Because when you turn your burrito into a taco or your taco into a burrito, I have to say it like that because we're not allowed to talk like adults on YouTube, uh, you mess up your sex, your sex chakra. And there are seven chakras you need to be able to activate to become a powerful working black magician or a user of the force. Just saying. Neophytes. And the acolyte, yeah, that's an insult to anyone who is Christian or Catholic. That's a word I usually associate with understudies in our religious pantheon. With these people practice, the, the correct word is neophyte. Neo being new. Neophyte. That's what you're called when you're first initiated into the Masons also. Just saying. And then you become adeptus and magus, and but acolyte is not used. Anyway, that's all for my video. You can support the channel. All the links are in the description. Uh, have you watched this show? I'm not. <laughs> Take care and God bless.